Hello everyone, hi church. I'm Anna if you haven't met me already and I hope you're having a lovely start to the week. Um, I'm pretty excited about the prospect of being able to see, start seeing some of my friends and family in you know the next few weeks and, and to start going to church again. Um, I'm finding I'm really looking forward to that but I don't know about you but I'm also a little bit nervous about life opening up again because I'm, I feel really safe at the moment, you know, I feel very in control of my surroundings, you know, my life, I work from home, so my life pretty much consists of my flat and I go for walks and go to the shops, of course. Um, I feel very in control and the concept of life open, opening up again, my diary starting to fill up, makes me a little bit nervous and a little bit scared even. And it's not the same situation, of course. But um, in John, at the, at the place we're in, um, in John at the moment, Jesus has been saying to his disciples that, look, you know, I'm going to die and you're going to be scared. He says, you're going to, each is going to be in their own homes, hiding. Um, Jesus knows that what's about to happen is going to terrify his disciples. Um, and in John 17, he prays for his disciples in advance of everything that he knows that is going to happen. And he makes the point in his prayer that um, Jesus is sending his disciples out into the world. He specifically says to God, you know, I do not ask that you take them out of the world. You know, he wants his disciples to go out into the world to do his work so that the world may know that God sent Jesus and that Jesus sent them. So Jesus wants his disciples, despite the fear, to go out into the world. And, but having said that, Jesus does say, you know, it's not gonna be easy. He, he says, because the world has hated them. Um, and in, in Philippians, for example, it even says that sometimes his disciples are called to suffer for Jesus' name and for Jesus' sake. But, but he has also just said in the previous chapter that he has overcome the world. And for, for the disciples, for us maybe this feels like, you know, well, we're like, oh, of course he's overcome the world, he was crucified. But um, as Josh said on Sunday, actually, you know, this was pre-resurrection, this was pre-crucifixion, and Jesus was talking in the present tense, I have overcome the world. Um, and this does actually make sense if you think about the experience of the disciples as they've known Jesus. I mean, Jesus has shown his dominance over the world um, throughout, you know, over materials like turning the water into wine, um, over the human body because he's done so many healing miracles, and even over death itself as he rose Lazarus from the dead. And so from their perspective, if he's sending them out into the world and telling them, you know, not to be afraid and that his power will be with them, they like that makes absolute sense with, for them. That is absolutely consistent with everything that Jesus has been showing them so far. And Jesus doesn't just send them out with this knowledge. He also speaks this beautiful prayer to God for them equipping them for getting God to equip them even further. So, for example, he prays that although he doesn't want God to take them out of the world because they have important work to do in the world, he wants them to be protected from the evil one. And he, he prays that they would be sanctified. And that sort of means like purified or consecrated um, by God's word and by Jesus' death because he's giving his life for them. And more than that, he doesn't send them out alone either. I mean, he prays that that they would be with him where he is and that that um, that, he, that their, God's love would be in them and that Jesus would be in them. Um, and I think when he's talking about this, he's referring to the Holy Spirit, which he's been referring to throughout this conversation he's been having with them because he's going to send the Holy Spirit to be his power within them so that they can do his work in the world. So 
although Jesus is sending them out of their comfort zone, he equips them so that they can be bold to go into the world. They'll be protected from the evil one, sanctified by God's word, loved by God for Jesus' sake, and with even with Jesus living in them in the Holy Spirit. And the kicker for me of this prayer is actually that although Jesus is in the room with a handful of disciples, he actually is praying for me. He is praying for us. He specifically says, I do not ask for these only, for these people in the room only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one just as you, Father, are in me and I in you. So over a thousand years ago, Jesus in a room with his disciples was praying for us. And that, that, I, that fills me with, I don't know, with awe and um, with wonder at that Jesus is thinking of me and of us. And it also fills me with confidence and makes me that little bit less scared to accept what might be coming, whatever might be coming over the next year. And so in light of all of this, I'm going to pray my prayer for the church in the next few months, year. Dear God, I pray that in the changing times that are coming, that you, Jesus, would be, would, that you would send us out fully equipped and sanctified with your spirit living in us and your word in our hearts. And I pray that you would help us to support each other because you make the point all the way through your prayer that, that you want us to be one with you and one with each other. So I pray that through the Holy Spirit we, we may be a support to each other so that we can be bold going out into the world for your glory and that your joy would be fulfilled within us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Have a good week, everyone.